Howdy gang, welcome to another Andy Forge video. Very excited for what we've got going on today. This is going to kick off our Grim Reminders stuff. February is going to be a very, very big month for us. Lots of constant consistently rolling. So keep your eyes peeled, hit that notification bell if you're interested. I will be having tons and tons of videos going up this month and uh, moving forward. So something to keep your eyes out on. Today is the merch video. Obviously, you saw that from the name and the thumbnail, but we'll be looking at all of the non-deck stuff from the game found campaign. There are a few things that I will show but not open and dig super into because they're gonna get their separate uh, own videos with a deeper breakdown this month. So I hope you're excited. I know I am. This is gonna be a, a big, big month of Keyforge content for us, not unlike the Winds of Exchange content. Um, so let's dig in. First thing I'm gonna show off is our spoilers. Sorry, they're off to the side in a little bit of a mess here. So we have our spoiler card, of course, with all of this beautiful, beautiful art on it. Um, here, if anybody hasn't seen the message already, you can go ahead and pause and give that a good read. Some more art on the inside. I'm curious to see what card this could be, or if it's something from the adventure that's come out. But that art of the skyship heading straight for one of the huge beasts Seems super, super cool. That as well. Always seems to be a skyship for, for scale with these guys, which I think is good. Kind of puts them into uh, into proportion. So here's our preview card. I'm going to do a deeper breakdown of the previews than in my shorts video, um, but there will be a link to that if you just want a, a quick and dirty look at them. So again, the preview card. These are the previews that I got. Nothing signed, unfortunately. Another game found without any Richard Garfield signed cards, but that's okay. It means that my time is coming. Uh, so we got D Animator, Bosch the Unyielding, and Incensed, and I'm going to talk about them. We'll do them in order of what that said. So D Animator is awesome. Three, a three power cyborg scientist creature with elusive that reads play after reap. Put a mineral, mineral. Oh wow! I didn't think I would have trouble with that. Put a mineralize counter on a creature. While a card has a mineralize counter, it is an artifact with the text action. Destroy this card. While it is an artifact, this card is not in the battle line. So you basically turn a creature into an artifact. It is no longer a creature because it says that it is an artifact. And as far as we are aware, there aren't doubles of those. It is a, a sort of replacing uh, prompt. And then it gets moved down to the artifact line. So a really creative way to get rid of a creature. Or I've seen a lot of people talking about how this is a great way for Logos or for um, houses like Sanctum, which I don't think Sanctum is in Amber Skies, but to get rid of captured Amber. So you would play this creature, mineralize one of your own creatures, and then it becomes an artifact with that action. You would have to wait till that appropriate house, but if it's a Logos creature that has captured a bunch of Amber, uh, then you can action it to destroy it and that amber goes to the common supply because the ruling on amber is if it's on creatures it goes to the opponent unless specified otherwise and if it's on artifacts it gets moved to the common supply so this is a, a great way to deal with that as well as to get rid of things like bryozoark or other pesky targets um, though they would keep their effect so i don't believe or actually it might be replacing the text of the creature that's something we might need to get a ruling on but it might be replacing the, the passive effects with just action destroyed this card, which is super, super interesting. I wonder if there'll be a way to remove the mineralized counter with uh, other cards so that it can become a creature again. Then we've got Bosch the Unyielding. It's got Taunt. After an enemy creature is destroyed fighting this creature, fully heal this creature. That being a passive effect and not an after fight effect, it means that if something is fought into it, and dies, then Bosch would heal fully. So you need something with at least six power if you're going to fight to kill him. Five power, one armor with taunt in that effect. Also that art is is very Brobnar, leaning heavy. I love the kind of heat shield that he's got going on and that, uh, I don't think it's called a maul. I forget what those are called, but looks really, really rad. Very good taunt creature. And then incensed. It's an action with an amber pip, and it says play. For the remainder of the turn, each friendly Brobnar creature gains plus three power. 
I'm glad that it has an amber. I don't know that this card would be super worth it without the pimp. The plus three power is really good. Um, it's certainly not bad, especially depending on the variations of cards in Amber Skies. But I think this will excel best if they reprint Might Makes Right in Amber Skies as well. Just because then you can get a three power burst from boost from all of your creatures to lead into a key cheat. It can, being common, it can lead to some more um, consistent Might Makes Rights. Uh, that, that's my only real thought on it. I'm sure there are other gimmicks, you know, Bosch healing, so all of a sudden you would be able to fight Bosch into a bigger creature and have him heal, or so on so forth, but that is, uh, Might Makes Right is the, the biggest takeaway that I've had from that one. But that is all of my spoilers. If you are in the discords or talk around online, you've probably seen them already. I didn't get anything particularly new. Uh, but the next thing that we will be showing off is the playmats. So as I lay this out here, after you see it, I will probably also flash a scrolling, you know, really high value photo on the screen. So I got two mats from this game found. The, I believe this is Sabrina the, Sabrina the, oh, I'll put the card on the screen as well. Sabrina the something, it's a rare creature where after you shuffle your discard pile into your deck, you gain three amber. She's really cool and I think that this card just looked super, super pretty. And I wanted something a little bit different, something that um, wasn't as like cool or awe-inspiring or gritty as some of the other mats that I like um, or have gotten in the past. And this is just a really good all-around one. This might become my new like weekly mat for Keyforge. I just think um, she and the creature, I can't remember the name of, but it comes as a, a special cat beast, similar to a floomph, but a little bit different, were, were really pretty. So that is that one. Let me move that away here. And then next we have the Geistoid one. So this one I'm also super excited about. Always have to get the new house, especially with the art like this. It is interesting, I haven't looked, but I'm wondering if this is different from Shady's actual art, because I know that this is Shady's and I recognize him at the very front, but I don't think in Shady's art there is, you know, the revenant um, and ghost kind of creatures in the background or uh, this geistoid creature. That, or maybe I'm just missing it, but I'm pretty sure Shady's has different kind of background to him on the actual card. So this is super, super cool, um, and I, I love it. This might depending on how the color balance looks and what you guys think become the new mat going forward, you know, finally replacing our um, Lieutenant Governor here from our Sanctum mat. But those are both absolutely gorgeous. You probably were seeing a little bit of a, um, a zoom in little moment there while I was discussing them. And then last but certainly not least amongst most of the, the merch here, is the pins. So I got a pin from every single house. They're all very, very pretty. They aren't in any particular order here. I'm just grabbing them from my pile and I will have a picture of all of them kind of out of the plastic for you guys to look at at the end. But I figured I never got the chance to get any of the pins in the past. And I really, really just love the Keyforge merch and I love each house. And I want to get an Eda bag for people who know what those are. Um, because the one that I currently have is starting to kind of tatter and wear away. Um, for those that don't know, it is like a bag that has a clear kind of plastic screen at the front where you can put pins and stickers and stuff to kind of show off what you've got. So these are all the pins, a pin from every single house. So I'm excited to get a new bag and slap all these in there. Um, if you see somebody walking around at a uh, Keyforge event this year that's got, you know, my white gloves on or my, uh, my dress shirt typically I will wear and then these pins in a bag, you will know it's me. Don't be afraid to, to come on up. But they all look so cool. I think what's interesting is that the Geistoid pin doesn't 
it still matches with the rest of the houses. It came in later, but I don't know, Let's see if it says anywhere on here who it is made by. Made by the Ghost Galaxy team, maybe. Maybe they make them in-house. So there isn't any other labeling on it or anything like that. So that would be cool if they're just making them at the Artiforge area. But it matches with everything. Despite it being a new house, same with Equidon. You know, they all have the same... Obviously, they try to keep the house logos themselves similar, but the pins have the same kind of sheen and aesthetic to them. Um, there isn't any disconnect, which is super, super cool. Other than the fact that maybe some of the earlier houses were a lot more circular, Brobnar and Shadows being uh, very big proponents of that. But it is it is awesome. I'm so happy to to finally have these. And you guys have seen them unwrapped probably at this moment and then two more things uh that i am not opening but i wanted to show off is the adventure here so this is the great hunt it looks really really cool apparently there's a couple different battle line scenarios for places like as locations you are pirates kind of hunting down the great beasts to get the treasure of a long dead sky pirate that was incredibly famous. I think that the adventures are only getting better and better and I've loved what I've played so far from them. If you are a big board gamer that is interested in Keyforge and you haven't touched the adventures because you feel that maybe it's a step away from what you love about Keyforge, I would recommend giving them a shot. I've had a lot of fun with them. I would recommend especially this one or Key Rackin or Gormengeist. They are challenging and interesting and interactive, I would just recommend going into it thinking of it more like a board game. And they create their own kind of subgenre of what decks are good specifically within the adventure. You know, it gives you another purpose to dig through your deck pile, your supply, and see kind of what you're dealing with and what you can pull out of it. What kind of decks you would best use in such a scenario. Kind of look at some of maybe you're not as great decks. And then last, but certainly not least, the collector's box. So I ordered a smaller game found tier than I had previously, but I still wanted to get this. I think I'll get all of these going forward. I hope that they make ones for the past sets at some point. I also hope, for my wallet's sake, that they do not release them all at the same time. But this is looking very similar to the collector's box from the Winds of Exchange campaign, which uh, I'm a little bit disappointed with. Not, not a huge disappointment. It's super interesting. It fits onto a shelf well. It is labeled, and it's got the houses on the side, so it's a great display. I was just hoping that maybe there was a little bit more to showcase. Um, and maybe there is, you know, when we'll go through it, we'll see the full art cards and every card from the Grim Reminder set, which will just be super, super cool. I absolutely love Geistoid from what I have played of them so far. So this is going to be awesome. There will be separate videos for both the Adventure and the Collector set coming out sometime in February, probably, if not February, then March. So keep your eyes peeled for that so you can take a deeper look at them. I'm going to try and hopefully play the Adventure between now and then uh, with someone else's copy, if possible, so that I have a bit more of an understanding when I'm breaking it open and taking a look at it so that I can pass it on to you. I'll also link the rules to the adventure in the description of that video so that you can take a peek at them and of course the collector set if you want to see every card in the set kind of in the flesh see the back of it see the full art cards then that'll go up as well but i'm super pumped they shipped out so quickly compared to last time and people overseas are already getting their stuff i mean it was truly just a a wonderful feat to see them kind of putting the pedal to the metal on this set and we've got op coming you know there's a, a lot that can be said about card games in general and a lot that can be said about gg and the way that certain things are handled and i know a lot of people you know find frustrations in certain areas but i think it's very very important that we recognize wins as well and this is just a huge a huge huge win i mean we're playing Grim reminders it shipped so fast and we've got uh the amber skies set coming out later this year there's just a new mass of things to look forward to oh 
my goodness, I almost forgot. We have a new friend. Um, this is the Flumph plush. Oh my goodness, I'll get some photos of this as well to kind of show off for you guys. But I, I can't believe I almost forgot to show you. It is very soft. It is very, very well made. I don't know where they get these made. Um, the hair is a bit crazy. Let's see, I'll turn. There's the face. Hopefully you guys can see both sets of eyes. The second set is a little bit hidden by hair, but it is certainly there. Very beautiful. And then something we've never seen from Flump before, little paws! Oh my goodness! Only three toe beans on each of the feet. Very, very cute. And then of course this long, you know, curly tail that you see bunched up next to them in the photos. These very, feels a lot more mouse-like than cat-like ears, but they are very floppy, very nice. And then of course the wings. So yeah, absolutely can't forget about this sitting very comfortably next to my Gruen. I'm hoping for more plushes each set. Uh, the, the flump is the thing that moved me up to the higher tier. And so I'm hoping maybe we can get one at the lower tiers so I'm not spending nearly as much money every time, but definitely needed to get this. So super, super, super happy with it. Very cute as a, a new kind of office buddy for me. But all that being said, I've got flump all over my gloves now. Um, all that being said, thank you guys for checking out the, <laughs> don't mind me, the merch video. Um, I, I'm having a blast playing what little grim reminders I'm already playing and I look forward to doing so, so, so much more. The next video you guys should see from me is my custom decks video where I'm gonna go into all my custom decks and show off the posters and the play mats and everything that came with those. I have actually played one of them and it was a blast. Um, I, it's this set of all the sets is the one that I would probably recommend the most to people. It is every bit of theming that I love most in any card game, but especially Keyforge with all the levels of recursion and everything. So it has been very, very awesome. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I will have a more thorough breakdown of at least one of the decks, if not all three, if I'm able to play them by then. And we will dig in and take a look at all those and their cards and any unique treatment and kind of the names that came from that. Of course, the playmats and the posters. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And remember, the most important part of Keyforge is the person sitting across the table. Have a good one.